So what I want to do next here is I'd like to add some snare drums in, right? So I'm going to use the keyboard to do this. It's pretty cool. I'm going to select and hit a button. I'm going to hit actually the C key. And that triggers, of course, you can see that triggers pad number three. Now, to get started, I need to have a metronome. So here's my metronome here, right? And this is the, I can turn the metronome on like that, and I'll play. That's kind of loud. I can bring it down with this little thing right here. A little stick. It's kind of cool. Okay, cool. Metronome's on. But I'm going to be in record. I only want to have the metronome play while I'm in record. So you want to make sure that I need to actually go to the metronome. If I double click this, I won't open up the metronome uh, tool at all. Now to get to our metronome, it's pretty simple here. I come here and this is my little menu right there. And I come to here, I go to file. Nope, I go to edit. Nope, I go to tools. Yes. Here in tools, we have metronome, the first option on top. And of course we have counting. I want to count in. So we have our counting on record. So give me like one, two, three, four, and we're starting after here one, two, three, four, we start to record. I like that. But I do not want to hear the metronome after I record. I want to hear what has been recorded after I record. So I only want to have the metronome work in record, as you can see. Here we can enable record or play or play only, or off. These four options are available. The next is the rate. In my case, I prefer quarter note. For you, find out what works for you best. This is me. So let's, go, let's say I go to play. Once it goes into play, this comes on. Let me turn this off. Let me go back to here. We're gonna go back to tools, metronome, and you see, plays off. So you can toggle that back and forth on the software platform rather than going back through here, right here on the UI. Okay, and user interface, as they call it. And so I can go to rate, which is good. I have sound. A classic sound is the MPC click, but you can also choose a tambourine. That's a tambourine. Didn't know that. That doesn't even sound like a tambourine to me, but I have been going to church too long. To understand a tambourine sound. Here's a shake. Okay, we got shake. And one more view here. Let's find something else we can deal with. What's another? Oh, a, a clap. Okay, enough of that. You got the idea. That's how it works. So now let me go back to what I want to do here. And we're going to go to tools. We're going to go to metronome. And we're going back here to sound. I like the MPC click. And then you want to choose an output. Now the output to choose always for me has always been and always will be the main out. One and two. So I can hear it over everything else. So I've got a metronome going on. I want to turn this one off actually. And now I want to start recording, but I've already recorded stuff in this track. I sort of like went through here, played these parts pretty easily to get in there. It's easy to do that. Now I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to do it with my keyboard again. So I want to make sure I go to the right-hand side and make sure we have keys as pads selected. So now I know my keys will trigger pads. So next, what I want to do probably is I want to overdub. I don't want to record over this. Because if I press record here and I want to start recording from the top, I would click here and I want to play that sound there. I say, okay, let's go. Wait a minute. What happened? It recorded over everything. You don't want that. Let's undo that. You want to make sure you're going to overdub. That means you're going to add on over what's there. So I want to go to overdub, obviously. Right? And here we an overdub. I'm gonna fasten on it. I wanna go, uh, here it is, overdubs right there. And so now I can start from here. Even though play is blinking, which means I can record from right where the play heads back, which is this white line here. 
This thing here, that is the playhead. So I want to record from the top. So let's try this. Matter of fact, what's this doing? I want to erase this too. So let's get this off here. I click on it and I'll press delete on my computer. It's gone. Let's try this now. So I got them, but I noticed already it's one of them's off. So I can see which one is off and I can zoom in too. So this is great. I can zoom in. Oh, this should be over here. Right there. Because you're going to know after a long time of working this software, any software pretty much, you'll know what's on and what's not on. And I'll set this right here. That's good. And this one should be on the opposite side of that one. Right there. That's good. Perfect. I think. Let's play it from the top now. Okay, I know it's right. Now I'm going to add another snare to this. I want to come to here. And I want to add another snare that's going to be right there. And I'm going to do this actually by hand and make it faster. I want one here and then one here. And I want to get maybe like this one right here. Let's hear this back. Oh, I like that. Okay, a little pickup before the next bass drum. So I want to do that again. So I want to come to here for the snare drum. Right there. And then for this one here, I want to come here. That's like three, three, three. Go. Yeah, one more three right here. And I want to go here too as well. Okay, so now I want to like open it up a little bit more. Good. Make sure we're on time. And pull it back out. So let's hit this back again. Wait, one more right here. I'm just doubling up these snare drums and adding a little part inside of them to get a flavor I want to get. Now, I can always take those sounds and put them into the program and make them trigger together. But I want to have them separated so I can add a little reverb on one or something else to give a little bit more of a tighter feel and more of an ambiance to it. Also, I want to compress one of them pretty tight so it hits harder and makes it complement that kick drum, which is kind of cool. But I want to do one more thing. So I did this piece right here. I like that. So that was like, wow, that's pretty good. And I come back here again. So I do this, this again. And I come to here, I think. I'm going to do it like this here. And one more here. Let's see this. I like that. So I think that's not bad. If I come back to here again, I'll do this again one more time. I know that's uh, here and there. So let's see. I may not want to put that there. Let's go back. Well, matter of fact, I want to do one right here at the very end. And then I want to do one right here. Hit us back. So as you see what I'm doing, I'm actually just creating the beat, getting more into it. So as you can see, I've placed these parts for the snare in certain places because I can feel it that way. And this is what should happen when you're actually working this way is to understand where the parts lie when you hear a track. This is great when you actually hear someone else's music, you'll be able to think of what they did to make it. And this is really cool. And it works great when you're doing step edit too as well.